In today's lecture, we're going to focus on the urinary system. Whenever we talk about the urinary system, the key player that we're always going to refer to is something called the kidney. So let's go ahead and get started here. What does the urinary system do? Well, it maintains chemical consistency of your blood, filters many liters of blood, or excuse me, fluid from your blood every single day, and it also sends things you don't want, like toxins, metabolic waste, and excess water out of the body. And some of the main wastes that your, your urinary system does help get rid of are things like urea, uric acid, and creatinine. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. So what are the organs that are involved in the urinary system? Well, as I mentioned before, the key one here is the kidney. And the kidney is sort of this bean-shaped organ that you'll see on either side of your um, of your uh, of the medial line of your abdomen, and the kidney is going to be retroperitoneal. And so when we say retroperitoneal, what we mean is it's behind the peritoneum, that sac that contains most of the abdominal organs. After urine uh, is sort of uh, produced by the kidney, it's going to come down the ureter and then travel down into the bladder and then eventually out the urethra. So that's sort of the path of urine that we take here. Okay, so what is the location and external anatomy of the kidney? Well, there's a few things we want to note here. So as I mentioned before, it's retroperitoneal, sort of a reddish brown color. Uh, also, it has a concave indentation on the medial side. And this concave medial indentation is called a hilum. And this is indicated right here. And what that is, is really it's an area where vessels and nerves uh, enter and exit the kidney. So the renal artery, the renal vein are going to be there. Okay, so what is the internal gross anatomy of the kidney? And how do we look at it here? There's a few structures we want to look at. The first is the renal cortex and the renal medulla. The renal cortex, which you see here, is really this outer surface of the kidney after you take a frontal section. The medulla is the surface that's just inside there, and so it's this sort of darker uh, surface that you see, and it's more, uh, it's deeper, right? It's deeper than the cortex. Okay. Uh, whenever you look at the medulla and you break it down further, so let's look at the other uh, side of this section, right? So whenever you look at the medulla, you see these structures right here that are called pyramids. So a bunch of renal pyramids compose the medulla, right? They're part of the medulla. And whenever you talk about a, a pyramid, as well as um, the cortex that is just next to it, that triangle section there is something we call a lobe. So when we say lobes of the kidneys, it would be like one of those triangles there. Okay, eventually what happens is the medulla has all these different tubules that we'll talk about in a second. And it's, they're going to help produce urine. And so whenever you have urine, what happens, maybe we'll put this uh, sort of in blue here. Whenever you have urine, it's going to go in this interior region here. Right? And this interior region is called the pelvis. Uh, these different projections from the pelvis are called calyces. But the interior portion here is called a pelvis. And then what's going to happen is you're going to have urine coming down the ureter, going to the bladder, then going out the ureter. Whenever you talk about any organ, you always want to think about what are the disorders that could result from this organ. And with the kidney, there's something called pyelonephritis. This is inflammation of the kidney that often results from uh, something like a urinary tract infection that's traveling up through the urethra, urethra uh, through the ureter, and then finally to the kidney. And if it actually gets all the way to the kidney, right, so, you know, urethra uh, to the bladder, to the uh, ureter, and then to the kidney, it's actually a very serious thing. It has to be treated with a heavy dose of antibiotics. Okay, so what's the microscopic anatomy of the kidney? Really, when we talk about microscopic anatomy, we're focusing on one main thing here, and it's the nephron. So what you see here on the left, that huge picture there, is a nephron. Let's go ahead and start breaking this apart so you can see where this comes from. Well, if you look at the top, very top left, we have renal cortex, renal medulla, we have the pelvis, things we talked about before. And then what's going to happen is we want to talk about the nephron, right? So there's two main parts here. There's the renal corpuscle, the renal tubule. So the corpuscle is uh, this area right here that I showed with my arrow there. And the tubule is all the yellow long tube that's following after that. So whenever we talk about the renal corpuscle, there's two main parts to that. So there's something called the glomerular capsule or Bowman's capsule, and then something called the glomerulus. The glomerulus is this ball of yarn looking thing, and it's a bunch of capillaries that are bringing blood into the Bowman's capsule to be filtered. All right, so the blood in the glomerulus sort of wants to be filtered, if you think of it in that sense. And so what's happening is a bunch of stuff's going to be removed from the blood inside the glomerulus and put into Bowman's capsule. That stuff that is removed is the stuff we, you know, basically we call the filtrate. 
And so when you think about the kidney filtering blood, it's nice to think of a little analogy. Think that you open your refrigerator door and you smell something that doesn't smell too good. What you could do is search the fridge and see, you know, do I have any uh, sour milk in there or anything else that's sort of, you know, old food that smells. And you could just remove the bad stuff if you wanted to. Or what you could do, an opposing view, is you could just open the fridge and be like, oh, that reeks. Take everything out of the fridge and then only put the good stuff back in that is not spoiled. And that latter analogy, taking everything out and only putting the good stuff back in, that's what your kidney does. So basically everything's taken out of the blood once it's uh, in the glomerulus and everything's taken out and put into Bowman's capsule and then slowly only the good things are put in. So what's taken out? What's taken out? Well, you know, water, ions, glucose, amino acids, urea. So as I mentioned, pretty much everything's taken out. When it's taken out of the blood, we call it the filtrate, right? And then slowly as we proceed down the nephron, things are going to be put back in. So let's go ahead and look at this. So the next section we want to talk about after Bowman's capsule is something called the proximal convoluted tubule. And that is going to be this region right over here of the nephron where my laser pointer is. So what's going on there? So really what's happening is you are getting reabsorption. So whenever stuff leaves the filtrate and goes back into the blood, we say it's reabsorption. So you get reabsorption of some of the good things, right? Water, ions, glucose, all of those are happening right here in the pro proximal convoluted tubule. Then what's happening is you're going to enter into this loop of Henry, Henley region, right? This loop of Henley. You have the descending limb on this side and then the ascending limb on this side. Uh, we can call it a nephron loop, but most people call it the loop of Henley. I think it's a good way to think of it. So what's going on there? Well, the descending limb has very low permeability to, to ions and urea, but it's highly permeable to water. So you're going to lose a lot of water on that descending loop right, right over here. Then when we have the ascending loop, it's basically sort of the opposite, right? It's, it's not very permeable to water, but it's very permeable to ions as you're coming back the ascending here. So it's sort of a neat thing. And so what's going to happen over time, and we'll get into this more in class and more in lab, but when you're dealing with the loop of Henle, you're going to get this increasing salt concentration uh, within the loop. And so as, as the medulla gets saltier and saltier, what's going to happen is you're going to have more and more water leaving the filtrate and being reabsorbed back into the blood. And so it's sort of this neat feedback system that helps you avoid uh, dehydration. Okay, after that, we have something called the distal convoluted tubule and that's this next part of the nephron here so we want to think what's going on there well as we go from the distal convoluted tubule and then finally down the collecting duct what's happening is this is sort of our soon-to-be urine and the final sort of touches on the urine if you will is that we could absorb even further water from that urine before we eliminate it from our body if we have an increased release of something called antidiuretic hormone and antidiuretic hormone is something that causes your body to reabsorb more water, right? So you're not peeing as much water out. And it's sort of neat when you think about it, because things like coffee, you know, a lot of caffeine, uh, actually will reduce your body's ability to produce this antidiuretic hormone. So the net effect of that is that you're going to be urinating more often. You're going to lose more water in your urine. Okay, so that's sort of the big picture of the nephron. This slide here is neat in that it shows you a microscopic image of the nephron and just to point out a few things you have the renal corpuscle here and you can see that right in here uh, and then you have the distal convoluted tubule over here and you're seeing the lumens of that distal convoluted tubule so realize this is a cross section that's sort of what you're looking at you can see some uh, proximal uh, convoluted tubules here as well but they're a little bit fuzzy so again just sort of showing you the microscopic anatomy uh, of the cartoon that we saw on the previous slide Okay, so what do the ureters and urinary bladder and urethra do? Well, they eliminate urine as we talked about, but something we want to talk about here too is sort of the differences in between males and females when we talk about uh, inflammation of the kidneys or urinary tract infections in general. And so you'll see we have the male on the left, we have the female on the right. I want to note one big difference here. You'll see the male urethra is much longer, right, than the female urethra. And so that's one reason why females are much more prone to urinary tract infections, because uh, urethra is much shorter, so it's much easier for bacteria to enter up into that area. The second reason is that the uh, male urethra, the tip of it is very far from the anus. So if we talk about the tip of the urethra here and the anus is over here, this is quite a distance. Whereas the female urethra and anus are very close in proximity. And so you can actually get, uh, it's very easy to get uh, transport of bacteria from the feces into the female urethra 
and this can lead to urinary tract infections. And if they travel, you know, up the urinary system far enough and get to the kidney, uh, then you could actually uh, result in a serious infection that is, you know, difficult to treat. Okay, the final thing, or second to last thing we want to talk about is something called micturition. And what this is, is just a fancy way to say urination. And so what's happening here is the brain center that's involved in controlling this is the pons that we've talked about before, so part of the brain stem. And what's going on here is there's three main muscles we want to think about. Some of them are under voluntary control, some are under involuntary control. And so what happens is um, once we have the, uh, the, parasympathetic, excuse me, the parasympathetic nervous system activated, we're going to get a contraction of a muscle here that's called the detrusor muscle that's sort of lining the bladder. When that contracts, the next thing that's going to happen, and this is sort of uh, involuntary now, is that you're going to have the internal urethral sphincter relax. Again, so this is involuntary. It's going to allow urine to start to empty down a little bit. And then finally what happens is you need voluntary uh, release of the external urethral sphincter. And this is that final conscious decision that you're saying that, okay, I'm going to pee now. And so it's the sort of uh, relationship of those three muscles that allow you to actually uh, urinate, again, under the control of the pons. Okay, so whenever we talk about any system, we always want to think about what disorders could occur in that system. And so the urinary system brings sort of four main disorders to, to mind. Number one is that urinary tract infection that we mentioned. Uh, we already discussed it, you know, why it's more common in females than males. And really, someone can note that they have a urinary tract infection because there will be a quite an intense burning sensation during micturition, right, when they're urinating. The second thing we want to talk about are things called kidney stones. This is a disorder when you have uh, certain types of uh, substances like calcium, magnesium, uric acid, pretty much any salts. And what they'll do is they'll crystallize and they'll precipitate. The crystallization is sort of the aggregation of these materials, and the precipitation is when they fall out of solution. Whenever you have something fall out of solution, uh, especially if you're talking about urination, be quite painful because what's happening is it's no longer dissolved in water. So as it's coming out the urethra, it's actually getting stuck, and you're getting these different pellets that are getting stuck in the urethra. It can be quite painful when that happens, and if they're severe enough, it might require um, sort of um, an ultrasound to bombard those, um, those kidney stones to break them up to allow them to pass out of the urinary system. So sometimes the conditions are, are quite severe, but to be treated with medication or ultrasound. Okay, number three is bladder cancer. And, you know, pretty much cancer is something that could affect any of the systems, and urinary is no exception. About 3% of cancers uh, are bladder cancers, and they're more common in men than in women. And then the final thing is kidney cancer. And this arises from the epithelial cells uh, of the tubules in the kidney that we discussed earlier. Okay, so today's lecture we focused on the urinary system, and remember the key players are the kidney, uh, the ureter, the bladder, and then the urethra. We talked about how the nephron works, which is the basic unit for filtration, and we want to make sure before you proceed to the next lecture that you have a solid understanding, you can articulate or describe all these different terms and concepts that we talked about today.